Our Sunday School lesson for this week takes us into the last lesson for this quarter to where we are now looking at again the fruits that are of the Spirit. We have come from looking at the birth of Christ. We have come from looking at the blessings because the Lord gave us his only begotten son to now looking at living under grace. And so living under grace, we are not supposed to be stagnant in our faith. Our faith, it should grow, it should prosper. And that's what we're gonna be taking a look at here in our Sunday School lesson this week. Because our faith grows, because our faith prospers, we should bear fruit. That is what we have been called to do as a child of God, to again, bear fruit bear good news to all those that live around us. We are supposed to let the world know that the world has been given the Lord's only begotten son who died for their sins so that they do not perish but have everlasting life. So we'll see here today as our Sunday school lessons open up there in the 18th verse where Paul, he talks about how we should be led by the spirit. Again, all of us who believe, all of us who genuinely believe in the Lord, we have received Again, the only begotten son's message and because of our faith in the only begotten son, because we have believed in his birth, his death and his resurrection, the Holy Spirit was poured out onto us. And because the Holy Spirit was poured out onto us, we are guided by the Holy Spirit. We are led by the Spirit. And Paul tells us there that we're no longer led by the law. We no longer live under the law. We live under grace, the grace again that was shown to us by the giving of the only begotten son. And again, because we live under grace, our faith it should grow, our faith it should mature. We cannot remain as a baby, we cannot remain as children in the faith. Our faith it must grow. And so we'll see there, as we continue on there from the opening verse of our Sunday School lesson, when we take a look at the 19th verse, when we take a look at the 20th and the 21st verse, We'll see where Paul, he speaks of the old man there. He speaks of the old ways. Look at all those traits that Paul says that we are to put off of us, that we, that we should no longer have within us. He talks about lewdness, we'll see there, fornication there. We'll see even wrath mentioned there. We'll see, most importantly, selfish ambitions. Something that you have heard me speak about before in the past is the fact that old man is selfish. Old man, yes, lives in disobedience against the Lord. Old man is wicked in his and her ways, right? We are supposed to not be that. If we are a child of God, we are supposed to love the Lord with our whole heart, and we are supposed to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Those are the commandments that Jesus gave to us. Our faith, if you haven't watched this sermon yet, where I spoke about the bond of perfection, do this now. Our faith is built on the foundation of love loving the Lord, loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. That is a source of strength that uplifts us, that carries us forward throughout life. Again, love is what we are supposed to be. God is love and we are his children. We are supposed to be in the image and in the likeness of him. So we ourselves, we should be love and we should move forward in the world with that love. Again, baptizing all people in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. If we are moving with our old ways, with our old man, we wouldn't be able to move with that love because the old man is selfish, filled with selfish ambitions and filled with anger and filled with wrath. And, and when we are filled with anger, when we are filled with wrath, when we are selfish in our ways, we cannot do the work of righteousness. We need to be of love. And that's what we see Paul say there again from the 19th through the 21st verse, where again, because we live under grace, we have faith in Christ and, and through that faith in Christ, we again, we have to put off those old ways. We must put off these ways in order for us to grow in our faith. When we put off these ways, we can then live in a manner where we truly desire the kingdom of the Lord, where we desire to enter into his heavenly kingdom. Again, if we are filled with anger, if we're filled with wrath, if we are moving through the works of the flesh, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we, again, we must work. We must try to put off those old ways so that we can, again, do the work that the Lord has commissioned us to do in baptizing all people in, in his sound doctrine. And again, if we desire the heavenly kingdom and the heavenly rewards that the Lord has for us, again, we must put off those old ways and we must live by faith. Our faith, it must be put into action. And the action of our faith 
is an action that is done out of the love of God. And so where Paul sp speaks to the works of the flesh, we'll see here when we get to the 22nd verse there, where Paul speaks of the fruits of the spirit. And take a look at the drastic difference there, again, that I've already touched on between the works that are of the flesh and then the fruits that are of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit, they are outwardly. They focus hourly, where the works of the flesh, they are inward focus, selfish. The, the fruits of the spirit looks at patience, looks at love, looks at joy, looks at faithfulness, right? Again, the Lord is faithful. We, his children, we are to be faithful as well. So again, if we want to uplift all of those that are around us, we cannot do that through works of the flesh, no matter how many people believe that. You can't be upset, you can't be jealous, you can't be filled with all kind of unrighteousness and then do works of righteousness. It just does not work that way. Again, we cannot be led by the lust of the flesh. We must be led by the Holy Spirit. And these two contrary natures, as Paul spoke of to the Romans, they are often at war with one another. And we discussed that in our Sunday school lessons this quarter as well. If we are led by the spirit, we will conquer our old ways. Never think that you can't beat who you once were. You have the ability to do that. You can beat your old ways. You can put that old man off of you. Again, if you allow the Lord to take over your life. If you submit yourself to his instructions, you can beat that old man. And then you can do the good work of the Lord. You can bear good fruit. And that's what we see Paul say there as we continue on in our Sunday school lesson today. In order for us to bear good fruit there, as we see Paul say there in the 25th and in the 26th verse, we'll see there that again, we must be led by the spirit. There is no other way. There is no other way that we can bear any good fruit. There is no way that we can uplift all of those that are around us. And when I say uplift all of those that are around us, I'm talking about uplifting them in their spirit. I'm not talking about simply giving them a dollar or even giving them something to eat. I'm talking about something that we can give them that will be nutritious for the soul, if you will. Our soul, it starves when we go without the Lord. And there are many starving souls in our world today. There are many dead souls in our world today because they have not fed off of the Lord. David said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Peter, he talked about how we should desire the pure milk of the word when we are babies. But again, we must grow in our faith. And the way that we grow in our faith is to first put off our old ways, and then to again be diligent in the word. We are to live by the truth. If you didn't watch that sermon, be sure to go and do it. We are to live by the truth. We are to live by the word of God. We are to be obedient to the instructions that were given to us by Christ. And, and when we are diligent in that way, and when we are diligent in our studies, our faith can then move out because that's what our faith is supposed to do. Love, yes, we can love ourselves, okay? But at the same time, the, the manner that we love ourselves, we are to love all those that are around us as well. Love should be focused outwardly. Love, again, as you have heard me say before, it doesn't tear anybody down. Love, it uplifts all of those that are around. Love, it edifies all of those that are around us. Specifically speaking, the true love the love that is of the Lord. And in order for us to move that way, in order for us to bear good fruit, we have to put off the ways of wickedness. All right, so as we move on here in our Sunday school lesson, when we take a look here, moving over into the sixth chapter, we'll see where Paul, he calls on the Galatians to put what they have learned about the fruit of the spirit, to put what they have learned about the works of the flesh as well, to put these things into actions. He calls for them to bear with one another. That's how we are to operate as a child of God. We are to bear with one another, be patient, be kind, love each other truly. Again, all of us are going through things in life. Life as I have preached for the month of January and the month of February as well, life ain't easy. And yes, I said the word ain't. Life ain't easy, life is difficult. But you know what makes life a tad bit easier is when we pick one another up. As I preached, Living for the Better, in that series of sermons, seven sermons, 
a source of strength that we have is in the Lord, but another source of strength that all of us have is each other. And so that is again, the fruit of the spirit when we are lifting one another up instead of tearing each other down. We are to bear with one another. We are to be there for each other. We are to help each other out. That is what we are supposed to do as a child of God. And as our lesson comes to a close there, in the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the 10th verse, we'll see here where Paul, he calls on the believers to simply do good. We are to teach one another. Again, uplifting each other. That is the primary goal that God has for us. That's why he commissioned us to go out into the world and to baptize all people in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to uplift one another. We can't hate each other. And sadly, that's what happens in our world. We're too busy being led by selfish ambitions, selfish desires, covetousness, and, and jealousies. And, and while we are being led like that, we simply look down on one another. We stunt down on each other. We, we tear each other down. And again, that's works that is of the flesh. That's the, the products. That is the profit that is of the flesh, tearing each other down, a society that is, is totally divided. Whereas the fruit of the spirit, it brings together. And our society will be a much better place if we actually move in the love that is of the Lord. Brotherly kindness is what scripture often calls on. We are to move with brotherly love. That is what scripture often calls on. Paul said that we should live peacefully as much as it depends on us with all of those that are around us. Living peaceably is a fruit that is of the spirit. It is a fruit of one who is truly led by the spirit, always seeking for peace, always seeking for togetherness, always seeking for fellowship. Okay. All right. So that is our Sunday school lesson for today. I hope that you enjoyed our lesson for today. What did we learn? Well, we learned again that we, of course, we live under grace. Grace is living under the love of God, that love that was shown to us by the giving of the only begotten son. We also learned today that in order for us to, to bear good fruit, we have to put off the old wicked ways. We have to put off our old man. And then again, we learned that when we put off the old man, we can then bear good fruit. We can bear the fruit that is of the spirit. And the fruit of the spirit, we learn, is dealing about love. Love that is not inward only. Love that focuses itself outwardly as well. So again, as you often hear me at the close of the Sunday School Lessons say, we ought to move in grace. That is our calling as a child of God, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves okay all right so i hope that you enjoyed this sunday school lesson and i hope that you enjoyed this quarter of lessons as well we're preparing to move into our spring quarter of sunday school lessons which again you know is going to be all focused on christ as we are going to begin making our way to the cross we're going to be making our way to palm sunday good friday we're going to be making our way to resurrection sunday as well so i certainly hope that you'll come for those Sunday school lessons in the spring quarter. And I hope again that you share our Sunday school lessons with somebody somewhere. And again, if you want to go deeper into the commentary for our Sunday school lesson this week, there are links in the description below as well to where you can read the commentary or you can find the audio link as well to where you can listen to the full commentary of our Sunday school lesson this week. Okay, so until that time, I'll continue to keep all of you lifted up in my prayers and I pray that the Lord continues to keep and to bless all of you.